Welcome to the video on basic concepts. Before we get to step one, we need to understand a few basic concepts of network security. This will give you the necessary background to tackle the 12 steps. The first concept is the CIA triad. This is one of the most basic principles of information security. CIA stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. In general, all data that you wish to keep secure needs to remain confidential, maintain integrity, and also be available. Confidentiality means simply keeping data secret. Well, secret from those who are not authorized to view it. Integrity means keeping data from being modified by unauthorized people or by accident. And availability means that information is available when you need it. The next concept is AAA or authentication, authorization, and accountability. Authentication means proving that you are who you say you are. So if you log in as Huckleberry and you produce Huckleberry's password, then the system will likely authenticate you. Authorization means the actions that it is possible to perform once you've been authenticated. Usually this defines what files you can read, write, or modify. And the third concept is accountability. This holds users accountable for their actions on the system. It's usually done with logging and auditing. Uh, one of the things you see a lot with accountability is if you're paying uh, for the amount of time you use on the network, it will be stored there. The next concept is defense in depth. Multiple layers of security. Multiple layers of security are used to protect resources in the network. The idea is if one layer of security fails, that another layer will still provide protection. A simple example is a server in a locked room. Even if it, an intruder succeeds in breaking into the server room, the intruder does not have access to the data on the server without a password. Next concept we look at is the principle of least privilege, which means you should only be able to access necessary information. A user must only be able to access information on the network that it is necessary to do their job. Likewise, a process must only be able to access the, ne the network resources that it needs to perform the legitimate services of that process. The next concept is good faith. And if you ask about good faith, you should have it. Per Wikipedia, and I quote, in contract law, the implied covenant of good faith and fair, and fair dealing is a general presumption that the parties to a contract will deal with each other honestly, fairly, and in good faith, so as not to destroy the right of the other parties to receive the benefits of the contract. Well, what does this mean in terms of information security? What this means in terms of information security is that the information on your network belonging to others should be protected in good faith. That is, it should be protected by all reasonable means. This is really all you can do. Now, I'm not a lawyer and I can't give legal advice, but should there ever be a security breach, you will most likely be in a much better legal position if all good faith efforts have been made to protect that data. The next concept is stewardship, meaning engineers don't own the network. Dictionary.com defines stewardship, quote, the position and duties of a steward 
person who acts as a surrogate of another or others, especially by managing property, financial affairs, real estate, etc. So what this means, if you are employed as a security analyst by a company, then you are the steward of the company's data, not the owner. The actual owner of the data is the company's management. You are responsible for securing the company's data to the best of your ability within the framework management has been has implemented. You are responsible to advise management how to best keep data safe. But the ultimate responsibility goes to management. Management that does not heed reasonable advice of the security analyst may be guilty of not acting in good faith. The next concept is the OSI reference model. If you have not seen the OSI reference model, I recommend you go to Wikipedia or some other site and take a look at it. This is extremely important to understand, but it's really too basic to go over in this course. Everyone needs to memorize this for all kinds of tests, like, like the uh, basic Cisco test or whatever, but it is something that is much more useful than just the fact that you have to memorize it in tests. And that is that each layer, if you figure on a security, a particular security area, if you understand the layer where that falls into, it will help you to understand overall things much better. And the last concept we will look at is hackers and black hats. The word hacker can be a misunderstood term, so we will avoid it in this course. We will use the term black hat to refer to people that break into or compromise, or at least attempt to, a network not belonging to them with malicious intent. Such malicious intent may include financial gain or political agenda. Whatever it is, you need to defend your network against black hats. That is the end of this lecture. I hope to see you again in step one.